Hello everyone, my name is Rahim Hassan, I'm the Comando Pilot and today we are going to understand how the fuel system of a Piper Archer 3 works. Well, before starting to talk about the fuel system of the Piper, uh, we need to understand the goal of a fuel system. So the purpose of a fuel system is to bring fuel from the fuel tank to the engine, as simple as that. Now let's divide this into, uh, into two subsystems. So um, for example, the uh, Cessna 172, the, it has the wing above the engine, while the Piper has the wing below the engine. Um, so, the Cessna 172, it has something in their favor, which is gravity. So basically, they are gravity-fed systems. While the Piper, they don't have that much luck, so it needs some sort of help electrically uh, to pump uh, um, fuel from the tank to the engine. So they are electrically-fed systems. Although, there are some aircrafts that even though they have the wing above the engines, they still have uh, help as a redundancy from the fuel pump. For example, the Technum, the Technum uh, uh, 2008, for example, they have, it has a, a fuel pump as well. Now, let's talk about the fuel tanks. So, um, outside the fuel tank, it's composed by two systems, the drain system and the vent system. The goal of the drain system is to purge before each flight in order for you to check if the fuel has been contaminated by water or even debris. While uh, um, the vent system is to avoid vacuum uh, inside the fuel tank for the fuel to flow to the supply without getting stuck inside the fuel tank. So basically, I will show it to you how does it work. Well, I just hope you guys could see I'm a bit of a rookie when it comes to filming. So, assuming that this straw, it's the fuel tank. So now I've just put fuel inside and I've closed the cap. So if it doesn't have any sort of vent system, the fuel won't go down, right? So what if I put a vent system? You saw? I just open a little bit in order not to create vacuum here inside. So then the fuel could go to the rest of the, the engine. So. How does, it, how does it read and where to? How, uh, how, how do we get information uh, from what device and, uh, and where? So basically there uh, is a float type sensor device that will uh, be inside the fuel tank that will, go, that will give us indication depending on the amount of fuel that we have. So basically it will go up and down and uh, as a consequence it will give information to the Garmin engine airframe interface that will give us inputs and information of the fuel to the MFD. So now we reach the fuel selector valve. So basically the fuel selector valve, um, the fuel is piped from the tanks through the fuel lines to a fuel control valve which is commonly referred as fuel selector valve. This valve uh, serves several functions and will potentially have left, right and off selections. Left and right allow the fuel to be fed to the engine from either the left tank or the right tank individually. So now the fuel is getting out from the fuel tanks uh, and uh, we need to... Um, we've already passed through the fuel selector valve and now we are entering into the cowling of the engine. So uh, between us and the cowling there is a firewall uh, in order to protect us in case of a fire in, inside the engine. So one of the things that you usually do um, on a pre-flight inspection um, is to, to drain the, the fuel tanks and the, the engine as well in order for you to understand that there are no sorts of debris or contaminations. So for that uh, um, we've already seen that there are two drain systems in the fuel tanks but we're still missing one so in the engine so it's now that uh, the fuel it's passing through so we've already passed the firewall so now we are passing through some filters in order to uh, in filters and drain in order for us to, uh, to see if there is some sort of contamination that it's going inside the engine or not so as i spoke in the beginning um, 
the one of the issues that uh, having a wing below the engine is that they don't have the gravity in their favor so it's now that we allocate the the electrical fuel pump in order to pump fuel from the fuel tanks to the engine now we cannot uh, rely on um, electrically uh, when it comes to the fuel pump uh, because uh, on the piper, um, the the amount of times that you use the electrical fuel pump, it's more. It's usually while you are taking off, while you are landing, or performing circuits. So once you are uh, doing some sort of navigation, you you have the the electrical fuel pump off. So in order for you to survive uh, without the electrical fuel pump you need to to have an engine driven fuel pump so basically an engine driven fuel pump it's bottled directly to an accessory pad on the engine crankcase for for when it delivers fuel under pressure to the fuel injector so you already know what comes next so basically it's the fuel injector servo regulator so the fuel injector uh, servo regulator uh, basically um, the regulator measures the airflow entering the engine and meet and the matters fuel according to the proper mixture so it's here that uh, until now we didn't have uh, any sorts of mixture of fuel and air because that's the perfect combination in order for you to have combustion you need oxygen as well so it's here on the fuel injector servo regulator that you will start to get the mixture done so the mixture is set and then now it's time for us to pass through another device that will uh, calculate the amount of fuel that we have but uh, the difference between this one and the flow type sensor it's that the flow type sensor it goes up and down accordingly to the, the amount of fuel that you have inside the tank so sometimes it can be uh, unreliable while you are climbing or descending for example um, while this type which is a flu fuel flow transducer uh, it will give you inputs uh, depending of, on the amount of fuel that it's passing through it so don't forget uh, uh, while you are performing your pre-flight checks and before testing that you if you have a, a tank full that you would reset and uh, or or if not if you have the, a certain amount of fuel that it's calculated for your flight that it's accordingly to the MFTs and they are synchronized for it to, in, for it to calculate on the fuel flow transducer uh, the, the with more precision the amount of fuel that you still have on your aircraft and uh, yes the fuel flow transducer produces a current pulse signal in order to measure fuel flow that, it, that has, is as low as 0.3 gallons per hour and this makes a more accurate than conventional fuel flow system measurements and now um, the fuel flow transducer uh, it will uh, give information to another Garmin engine airframe interface and uh, from there it will give input to our MFD and PFD as well. So we have already know how much fuel we got, we have already started in the tanks, now we are already in the transducer, so now the, we are reaching to the end. So basically we need to spread our fuel, so we have a fuel distributor and a fuel nozzle. So a fuel distributor has more or less uh, uh, a shape of a spider, so because of the legs it's kind of, a, it spreads itself uh, and the, the fuel nozzle that will give uh, fuel um, to the cylinders. So throughout uh, all this video I try to speak uh, uh, sequentially uh, where does it start and uh, where does it end uh, and as you can see here on the POH uh, um, from the Piper it, it, uh, I started from the fuel tanks and I ended on the fuel nozzles so um, I hope this video helped you guys uh, in order for you to understand more about how the fuel system works um, stay tuned I hope you like the video guys please hit that like button and subscribe and uh, I'll see you next time